thus have I heard. On one occasion the Blessed One was living at Savati in Jeta's Grove, an Artapindika's park. Then the wanderer Wachagota went to the Blessed One and exchanged greetings with him. When this courteous and amiable talk had finished, he sat down at one side and asked the Blessed One, How is it, Master Gotama? Do you hold the view? The world is eternal. Only this is true. Anything else is wrong. Watcher, I do not hold the view. The world is eternal. Only this is true. Anything else is wrong. Then, does Master Gotama hold the view? The world is not eternal. Only this is true. Anything else is wrong. Watcher, I do not hold this view. Does Master Gotama hold the view the world is finite? Only this is true. Anything else is wrong. Watcher, I do not hold this view. Does Master Gotama hold the view the world is infinite? Only this is true. Anything else is wrong. Watcher, I do not hold this view. Does Master Gotama hold the view the soul and the body are the same? Watcher, I do not hold this view. Does Master Gotama hold the view the soul is one thing and the body another? Only this is true. Watcher, I do not hold this view. Does Master Gotama hold the view after death the Tathagata exists? Only this is true. Anything else is wrong. Watcher, I do not hold this view. Then does Master Gotama hold the view after death, the Tathagata does not exist. Watcher, I do not hold this view. Does Master Gotama hold the view after death, the Tathagata both exists and does not exist? Only this is true. Anything else is wrong. Watcher, I do not hold this view. Then does Master Gotama hold the view after death a Tathagata neither exists nor does not exist? Watcha, I do not hold this view. How is it then, Master Gotama, when asked each of these ten questions, you reply, I do not hold this view? What danger does Master Gotama see that he does not take up any of these speculative views? Watcher, these speculative views are a thicket of views a wilderness of views, a contortion of views, a vacillation of views, a fetter of views. It is beset by suffering, by vexation, by despair and by fever and it does not lead to disenchantment, to dispassion, to cessation, to peace, 
to direct knowledge, to enlightenment, or to Nibbana. Seeing this danger, I do not take up any of these speculative views. Then, does Master Gotama hold any speculative view at all? Watcher, speculative view is something that the Tathagata has put away. For the Tathagata Watcher has seen this. Such is material form. Such its origin. Such its disappearance. Such is feeling. Such its origin. Such its disappearance. Such is perception. Such its origin. Such its disappearance. Such are mental formations. Such their origin. Such their disappearance. Such is sense consciousness. Such its origin. Such its disappearance. Therefore I say, with the destruction, fading away, cessation, giving up, and relinquishing of all conceivings, all excogitations, all eye-making, mind-making, and the underlying tendency to conceit. The Tathagata is liberated through not clinging. But Master Gotama, one whose mind is thus released, where do they reappear? The term reappears does not apply, Wacha. Then they do not reappear, Master Gotama? The term does not reappear does not apply, Watcher. Then they both reappear and do not reappear, Master Gotama? It does not apply, Watcher. Then they neither reappear nor do not reappear, Master Gotama. This does not apply, Watcher. When Master Gotama is asked these four questions, he replies, The terms do not apply, Watcha. Here I have fallen into bewilderment and fallen into confusion, and the measure of confidence I had gained through previous conversations with Master Gotama has now disappeared. Of course you're bewildered, Vacha. This is enough to cause you confusion. For this Dharma is profound, hard to see, and hard to understand. Peaceful and sublime, unattainable by mere reasoning, Subtle, to be experienced by the wise. It is hard for you to understand it when you hold another view, accept another teaching, approve of another teaching, 
pursue a different training and follow a different teacher. So I shall question you about this in return, Watcher. Answer as you choose. What do you think, Watcher? Suppose a fire were burning before you. Would you know this fire is burning before me? I would, Master Gotama. If someone were to ask you, Wacha, what does this fire burning before you burn independence on? Being asked thus, what would you answer? I would answer, this fire burning before me burns independence on grass and sticks. If that fire before you were to be extinguished, would you know, Watcher? This fire before me has been extinguished. I would, Master Gotama. If someone then were to ask you, when that fire before you was extinguished, to which direction did it go? To the east, the west, the north, or the south? What would you answer? That does not apply, Master Gotama. The fire burned in dependence on its fuel of grass and sticks. When that is used up, if it does not get any more fuel, being without fuel, it is reckoned as extinguished. So too, Watcher, the Tathagata has abandoned that material form, feeling, perception, mental formations, and sense consciousness by which one describing the Tathagata might describe him. He has cut it off at the root, made it like a palm stump, done away with it so it is no longer subject to future arising. The Tathagata is liberated from reckoning in terms of all these five aggregates, Watcha. He is profound, immeasurable, unfathomable, like the ocean. The terms reappear or does not reappear or both reappears and does not reappear, or neither reappears nor does not reappear, do not apply. The Tathagata has abandoned the five aggregates, by which one describing the Tathagata might describe him. He has cut them off at the root, made it like a palm stump, done away with it, so that they are no longer subject to future arising. When this was said, the wanderer Wachagota said to the Blessed One, Master Gotama, suppose there were a great sala tree not far from a village or town, and impermanence wore away its branches and foliage, its bark and sapwood, so that on a later occasion, being divested of branches and foliage, 
bark and sapwood. It became pure, consisting entirely of heartwood. So too, this discourse of Master Gotama is divested of branches and foliage, divested of bark and sapwood, and is pure, consisting entirely of heartwood. Magnificent Master Gotama. Magnificent Master Gotama. Master Gotama has made the Dharma clear in many ways, as though he were turning upright what had been overthrown, revealing what was hidden, showing the way to one who was lost, or holding up a lamp in the dark for those with eyesight to see forms. I go to Master Gotama for refuge and to the Dharma and to the Sangha. From today, let Master Gotama remember me as a lay follower who has gone to him for refuge, for life.